What's up guys, Stevie here with Lucky Crit. Coming soon to Fire Emblem Heroes, likely on the 30th of June this Friday, is a brand new banner featuring a bunch of Fire Emblem Awakening characters donning swimsuits. They're not exactly the characters we were expecting, but their art looks great regardless, and it seems like it's going to be a pretty amazing banner, so let's break it down. First up we've got Frederick, the Horizon Watcher. Collector of pebbles and shells on the beach, his weapon is the Seashell, and he'll be another Grey Thief slash Ninja unit this time around. The Seashell Plus has a might of 10, and lowers enemy defense and resistance by 5 until the end of the foe's next action, and if Frederick has 100% HP at the start of combat, he gets a mini Fury boost with attack, speed, defense, and resistance plus 2, but will take damage automatically thereafter. So there's a little bit of Celica's Ragnarok in his weapon, which will lend to him being a bit more potent when he's fully healed. He's also got Ardent Sacrifice, Armored Blow, and Seal Attack and Speed 2. Seal Attack and Speed 2 lowers enemy attack and speed minus 5 through their next action, so that really all around complements Frederick's ability to totally debuff the enemy after an attack. We've also got some Latin American screenshots of all the units at level 40, so we can get a general idea of their stat spread, but please keep in mind that these are their stats on the Lunatic chapters being released with the banner, so their stats are buffed here and there a little bit by varying amounts. This will give us a nice look at how they'll function though. Thanks to Reddit user Symphonix, we also have their approximate stats after removing the Lunatic mode buffs. Frederick comes in with level 40 bases of 40 HP, 33 attack, 31 speed, 28 defense, and 17 resistance. He's about on par bases-wise with other decent thieves and ninjas like Jafar, but unfortunately his lower speed and middling attack won't be doing him any favors, and he's still outshined by the likes of Kagero. Still, with his decent starting weapon and debuffs, he could be a decent niche gray unit for your arsenal. Next up we've got Gaius, Thief Exposed. The Elysian thief known for his sweet tooth and hiding candy in his clothes, yet can't when he's dressed like this. This time around Gaius remains a gray unit, but will be an archer. His weapon is the Refreshing Bolt, which has 12 might and grants the user attack, speed, defense, and resistance plus 2 at the beginning of combat. If you have full HP, then you'll take 2 damage after combat, and of course it's effective against flyers. So once again we've got a bit of a Celica effect here, where at full health you'll get a bit of an extra fury boost for that next attack. He also comes with Astra, Vantage, and Defense Ploy, which is similar to the other ploy skills we've seen lately, this time lowering the enemy's defense by 5 at the end of their next action, if their resistance is lower than Gaius's. And this skill does look like it'll work pretty well with him, considering his base level 40 resistance looks like it'll be 28. Having base attack in the early 30s is similar to George, Klein, and Takumi, but if his attack truly ends up only being 30 after all, he'll be a bit weaker on the offense than the three of them, though he will have some higher speed than they will. Stats-wise, he looks like a better Setsuna, and for those who didn't manage to pull a Bride Cordelia from the Bride banner, Gaius will be a solid archer pick on your team if you still need one, and all of these summer units come with some pretty solid skills built in for a pretty easy unit build. He might even be worth a Brave Bow Inherit if you can afford it. Next is Robin, who's been driving the internet crazy. Robin is a seaside tactician who loves the strange creatures she finds on the beach. She's a blue lance user now, and she comes equipped with the Deft Harpoon that has a might of 14. Like the other summer units so far, her weapon has the built-in Celica effect of attack, speed, defense, and resistance plus 2 if you're at full HP, but then you take 2 damage after combat. Noticing a trend here? She's also got Reposition, which is a great assist skill, HP and defense 2, which grants HP plus 4 and defense plus 2, and Lance Valor, which is similar to Axe Experience that we got previously on Spring Crom, in that it grants all Lance users on your team double SP if Robin survives the battle. So on top of the experience skills, we'll also be seeing some Valor skills for double SP as well. This could be good for getting some more SP on your Blue Lance users, but it's pretty niche and situational. As far as her stat spread goes, Brave Lance and Life and Death 3 could be really great here if you want to turn Robin into a bit of a powerhouse glass cannon with some more brittle defenses. Otherwise, her base speed is pretty solid, and with her weapon's 14 might on top of her base attack, she should be able to do some pretty hefty damage by default. She's less tanky on defense than Lucas, but also has much higher resistance, and she's much faster than Ephraim, but comes without his buffs. Overall though, she's solid. And lastly, we've got Tiki, the Summering Scion, known as the Voice of the Divine Dragon. She's lived through thousands of summers, but usually doesn't need to worry about swimming gear. This time around, she's a green axe user, so she'll no longer be equipped with a Dragonstone and won't be turning into a dragon. Instead, she comes equipped with the Melon Crusher, which has 14 might and also grants the same effect as the other weapons so far, attack, speed, defense, and resistance plus 2 at full HP, and 2 damage after combat. She's also got Soul as her special, and a new skill in Close Defense 3, granting her defense and resistance plus 6 during combat if she's attacked by a foe using a sword, axe, lance, or dragonstone. So anything that engages her in close combat will provide her with a defense and resistance boost in battle. Pretty nice. And finally, her last skill is Axe Valor 3, which does the same as Robin's Lance Valor skill, but for Axe units. 
Another decent training and SP grinding skill, but not recommended for arena battles or tempest trials. Tiki's stat spread is pretty great for a lower speed unit, with pretty solid stats all around. She has pretty outstanding attack, good defense, and might certainly be worthy of a Brave Axe if you want to inherit one onto her, or perhaps she might warrant a Tank Fury build. Unfortunately though, in general, green infantry axe users tend to be a bit less usable than their flying and armored counterparts, like Michaelis, Minerva, Hector, and so on. But she's definitely a shining example of the lot. If you end up summoning on this banner, your best odds will be to summon Grey, with the improved chances from both Frederick and Gaius, alongside lesser but still good odds with green and blue from Tiki and Robin. I would highly suggest not summoning from any red orbs on this banner, as, generally speaking, it's much better to summon from the same colors as the banner units for the extra chances of getting a 5-star unit from that color. Also from the data mine, it looks like we'll be getting another Tempest Trial soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that one as well. That's gonna wrap up today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to slash the thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode or learned anything new. Comment heroes in the comment section, and also let me know if you plan on trying to summon for any of these characters. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet so you can stay up to date on our content, and for behind the scenes information and news revealed on the fly, follow us on Twitter at Lucky Creek Gaming, and I'll see you all next time.